adjustments to the program as well. So we got a pretty healthy club, that Northeastern Midget Association. And now we're going to watch the full midgets, the full-size midgets, the 400 cube inch, uh, these, these um, uh, you know, 400 horsepower methanol burning under a thousand pound NEMA midgets ready to turn loose for 25 laps. Here they come. Green flag. Yeah, three wide out of turn two down the back stretch. That's Avery Storr up on the outside taking it three wide again. Look at him. Passing three cars at once. Avery Storr in that number 39 on the move going after Doug Cleveland. Shuffle around there in the first and second turn, but everybody keeps going in the right direction, and Avery Storr is the new leader. Wins up and flag. He's running for the front stretch. Well, he's able to clear two cars on the right turn number two. Yeah, Zick is on the move in that number nine. He is already up to the fourth spot and going the fifth spot, going for Morris. He's looking to the outside of Alan Chambers as they race through that first and second turn. And Zick passes Chambers. Doug Cleveland in the same turn, and that number nine has gone to third. Yeah, John Zick, two for one. He's got the 37. And the number seven guy goes to the outside of Cleveland for that spot. Driving that machine is Alan Chambers. Yeah, Chambers is in a battle trying to hold on to uh, a top five spot, trying to take the fourth spot away from Doug Cleveland. Todd Bertrand looking for some running room in the number 47. He's kind of boxed in there, but put it behind those two. Randy Capello running super. Set sail in that number 39. Randy going as hard as he can to try and catch him. And John Zick also. They have pulled away from the rest of the field. Meanwhile, Tom Bertrand. Oh, big contact with Doug Cleveland. Bertrand goes around. A couple of cars and one on its side over on the turn. Three, four cars involved and one is flipped over. So at that point, we bring out the red flag just so we can check on all the drivers and. Uh, that all started when Todd Bertrand making the pass on Doug Cleveland. They came together up there in the first turn, and then at that point, all hell breaks loose. We got Keith Rocco up there in the number one. Of course, Doug Cleveland is involved. Well, it became quite blinding there between turns one and two as the smoke started just absolutely engulfing the speedway. Couldn't see anything. Visibility had to be down to nothing as uh, several cars getting involved here. And unfortunately, both the 47 and the 87 machine there, Doug Cleveland up into the wall. Yeah, we've got uh, the number one up there as well. And again, uh, these guys are going so fast. Looks like uh, we've got the A1 of Mike Horn also. Uh, they're going so fast and they go into the turn and when you've got a couple of cars spinning in front of you, uh, you know, no fenders, so you can lean on the guy next to you. So uh, they've um, uprighted the car that was uh, on its side and getting it uh, back onto the racetrack and it looks like at least uh, one or two of these cars will end up going in the uh, going in on the hook. Now it looks like minimal damage to the car that was on its side there. Also Bertrand was able to clear the accident. He's here sitting here on the front stretch so uh, Todd did a heads up job uh, keeping that car straight out of the race car. The 47 will not be penalized. He was of course involved in the initial incident uh, that caused that uh, elongated red flag period. But we've got them all doubled up and ready for the restart. 18 laps to go in our 25-lap NEMA main event. Avery Store and Randy Cabral in the front row. Here they come. Green flag. And Avery does not get a good start. Randy Cabral does. What? He's going for two in a row tonight. as if maybe Avery might have spun the tires or whatever when the green came out because he just could not go and the green, Randy did, and he jumps away into a big lead. Avery is holding on to second but being chased by John Zick right now in the number nine, then Todd Bertrand in the 47 and Jim Chambers in the 21. Right behind those drivers, you got Alan Chambers, he drives that number seven machine down the back stretch, six car length advantage at least for the number 74, your leader, Randy Cabral.
that second spot lead as John Zick kind of searches around the racetrack, trying to find a quicker way around. Yeah, not happening so far. The seven car pulls off that inside Alan Chambers as he uh, ends his night in that beautiful number seven midget. Alan had high hopes for this race because he was starting in the outside ball position. And that's a tough one for him to have to end the race early. Randy Cabral with almost a straightaway lead now in the number 74. He'll encounter some of the backmarkers now, catching up to Lance and in the number 50. But not a problem for Randy as he just rockets on by, puts Lance and down a lap. Meanwhile, Avery Storr continues that run in second spot and continues to be about four or five ahead of the number nine of John Six. Six still trying to play catch up. He's got Todd Bertrand behind him. After Bertrand, looks like it's the 21 machine of Jimmy Chambers. And Chambers with a good run tonight, too, but he's not gaining on Todd Bertrand. And nobody's gaining on Randy Cabral. He continues to just open it up and continues to keep his laps in the low 13 seconds. Low to mid-13 seconds, anyway. Uh, about the fastest car on the track. Occasionally somebody else like Jim Chambers will turn a fast lap, but Randy Cabral just keeps pouring it on and now has better than a straightaway lead. Meanwhile, John Zick has caught Avery Starr, and that could turn into a battle, but we've got just a handful of laps left. Yeah, this time by three today. I don't know if there's a hiccup or not by the, the number 39 machine of Storm, but Zick definitely caught the rear bumper there as uh, laps continue to dwindle down at a very here in the name of Midget main event. Yeah, and Avery Starr has opened that back up again to three car lengths over John Zick with just two laps to go. Zick going to pedal as hard as he can, but again, as he has to negotiate his way around the lap car, he gives up a few more car lengths. So, one more, the white flag for Randy Cabral, well out in front. Here's Avery Storr for second, and John Zick running in third. Checkered flags will go in the air, and Randy Cabral will win the Angelillo Memorial Race the line. Now we even actually have to wait a couple of seconds for our second place finish. And that is Avery Storr. John Zick will be third. Todd Bertrand fourth. Jim Chambers is fifth. Keith Rocco will be sixth. Andy Cuccini. Two more feature events here at the Speed Bowl this evening. The SK Modifieds and the Mini Stocks also on the agenda here at the Speed Bowl. As uh, we're going to go down and talk to our top three finishers in our NEMA Midget main event. 25 laps of fast action here with the NEMA Midgets. The official order finished. Randy Cabral, Avery Storr, John Sick, Todd Bertrand, Jim Chambers, Keith Rocco, six, Dan Cugini, Andrew Hunt, Lanson Fernaro, Alan Chambers, Doug Cleveland, Paul Scali, Mike Horn, and we are going to go down trackside and talk to our top three drivers with our announcer, Pete Falcone. All right, John, thank you very much. Yeah, we're going to start back here with our Third place finisher, John Zick in the number nine, picks up yet another podium finish in the uh, Jay-Z Motorsports entry. And we'll get a second with John, who picks up a third place tonight. Just couldn't quite close the gap there on Avery. Yeah, no, he was getting looser and looser. And, uh, you know, we caught him there with about five to go and just couldn't, couldn't do anything after that. Um, and we were just too loose. We were too tight all day, and I made an adjustment. Prior to the heat race, we were great, and then um, just not, not great tonight in the feature. Congratulations on third place. Thanks, Pete. John Zick with another uh, podium finish, and we'll slide over here to the number 39. Avery Storr comes home second, our early leader in the race, and just off a little bit tonight. Yeah, just off a little bit. I mean, uh, Last year, me and Randy ran 1-2 here, and I got the edge, and this year he got it. I'm really happy for him. He did a great job, and he definitely had the car to beat. Well, congratulations to you on a strong second play. Thank you. Avery Storr comes home second in the number 39, and way down here on the other part of the racetrack, getting a photo with the entire crew. We're going to bust the party and come on in here interrupt this for a moment so we can talk to Randy Cabral again, who won both ends of the Angelillo Memorial Race tonight. Well, you know, I'll tell a quick little funny story, and uh, this race, especially doubling up tonight, really means something to me, because I remember when um, one of the first conversations I had with Gene Angelillo, when I first started driving, before I even got in the car, he knew I was going to drive, he said to uh, Chuck Welling, my car owner, he said, that kid might be able to work in a car, but he'll never be a race car driver. So, Gene, here I am. I won your race two, 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 uh, twice in one night. So, thanks, Chuck Welling, for believing in me. 
Uh, tonight's also special because I, re I have, I've won with four different car owners so far this year. I won with my father, Tim Bertrand, Tim Tebow, and Bobby Seymour, and all four are here tonight. So I just got to thank them. I got to thank Waterford. They're, they're awesome. I love racing here. Uh, I, I'm basically weekly this year, so uh, thanks for everything. Um, I finally won again at Waterford in the Midget. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thanks, Waterford, again. Big, big night for Randy Cabral, who wins both ends of the NEMA Midgets here and uh, picks up a lot of hardware for his win, particularly those special awards in the Angelillo Memorial Race. Guys?